This is going to be my second video on the Indian ultraviolet bike. I think it's a significant innovation and as it turns out there are a total of at least three configurations of this bike. And check this out. We were talking in the comment section about whether or not these bikes are going to come to the US. Apparently the company's own claim is that this bike is coming to Europe in the third quarter and to the Americas before the end of this year. That would mean we could get these bikes and hopefully a new president as well by early next year, which I think is a positive. Now I looked at some of the numbers here, which are quite incredible. So I don't know if I should even believe this. A range of 200 miles, which I mentioned in the previous video, is impressive. It's not impossible. But there is this claim of close to a million kilometers on the battery with warranty. In miles, it would be, it would be a little bit over a half million miles. And I'm not even sure what this is supposed to, to mean because as far as batteries are concerned, we are most interested in the number of cycles. How many times can I charge up the battery? But apparently this kilometer uh, formula is supposed to mean that with all of the cycles you have, like however many times you have to, to re recharge the battery, you would, you would be able to cover a total of a half million miles with the motorcycle. Now, the average car driver, unless it's an extremely heavy driver, is not going to put more than 150,000 miles into a car in a decade. So this would be enough for five decades or four decades, say, comparatively to a car. This is like four decades worth of driving a car, which is quite incredible. I mean, none of the batteries that I have seen so far have this kind of uh, longevity or durability. And I would really like to see if this is, this is true, if this is actually uh, doable. The chargers, I think these chargers are made for the European and possibly Asian 22240 outlets. So in the US where, where most people have only 110, uh, it may not be so easy. There are many public charging places. If you pay something like $100 a month, and then you could charge the bike over there. Probably you would not charge it in an apartment, but if you have a garage, I paid last year for a rewiring job in my Manhattan apartment for to have a 22240 plug, and I think that cost me close to $2,000, and that did not include closing the wall back. When the electrician comes over, they rip apart the walls and they put in the electric parts and they leave it like that. So the, the rest of it is your problem. But for an urban dweller like in New York, I would probably end up paying for some kind of a, a charging place. And there are some stations where you can charge for free if you don't stay for over an hour, which is really nice. And I think the charging is on the 240 so this battery is its definitely not a well-known top-of-the-range brand. I typically trust only the Japanese, German, and South Korean batteries. Those are the best. But truth be told, the Chinese no-name batteries have improved a lot over the last few years. So it'll be interesting to see whether or not this Indian company can match the reliability of some of the best brands out there and if these bikes would catch fire or not. So far these bikes are new even in India. So so this is the first configuration which I already covered last time. It's about three and a half thousand dollars which for what you're getting 120 miles of range at a top speed of 100 miles an hour is really not bad. It's, it's really quite good. There is another configuration called the Recon, the Match 2 Recon. 
instead of three and a half, this is more like four and a half thousand dollars. And there isn't that much of a difference. Mostly the difference is the range. There's a little bit more torque, but the same top speed. But the range increases substantially. I would say this would be 160 miles around there, which is really great because you could go away a hundred. Uh, you could go away 80 miles away and come back and not have to recharge. But I think range is not even that important at this at this point because you go to Google Map, type in charging stations, and you'll see that charging places are all over the place if you pay the fee. It's not free. Now, if you compare it to something like the 400 Duke from KTM, which apparently is also partially Indian owned. It's, there is, still is an Austrian investor, but there is also an Indian one. I really like this bike. I think the 400 from K, for the Super Duke, first of all, the styling is great. And at 400, it's friendly enough for a beginner and has enough punch so that you don't get bored with it after, after a few months. So this is really not a, not a bad bike uh, to get. But it is six and a half thousand dollars, so it's it's gonna be a little bit more, and you know just looking at these pipes, these pipes coming out and the gasoline engine, I have been looking at so many, and I have been riding and test riding so many electric rides that at this point it's it's looking like something out of the Middle Ages, these pipes and the uh, smoke coming out and it's hot, so it's really ancient technology that we are looking at at this point but it's worth comparing like the acceleration you're getting a hundred a hundred newton meter for four and a half maybe five thousand dollars and this is six and a half thousand dollars actually the ultraviolet the upper model is probably going to increase in price so it's probably going to go head to head with something like this uh, ktm duke and it's going to have better acceleration Probably the power is going to be similar. The top speed, probably the gasoline bike. It might be a little bit more. It's not going to be much more. I mean, 100 miles an hour top speed for a 400, you're not going to get much more out of that. Maybe 110, 120. One thing that's interesting about the, the Duke is that according to the company's own claim, they are bringing the smaller Dukes to the U.S. There is a 250 Duke. Apparently, this is in the U.S. market. I'm just finding out. I had no idea. So this is four and a half thousand dollars, but the specs are going to be humble compared to an electric, especially on this short range. So these bikes are best used if you like want to go for a day trip or the whole week or weekend and just explore back roads that sort of stuff I can see why a person would get it but you know just looking at this ancient technology is giving me the chills right now and then there is this bike they are marketing an ultraviolet super bike and the specs on it are very similar to what you would get from a gasoline equivalent I don't know what the price is I have not found it so you look at the weight weight is about close to 400 pounds acceleration 0 to 60 about three seconds which is supercar rating pretty similar to other super bikes and i don't see the horsepower it's not showing the horsepower it's not even showing the torque unless i'm blind hmm so this seems to be just something they are working on. It's probably not going to come to the U.S. this year. But if you compare the specs that we know to known superbikes like the MV Augusta, you're going to get something very similar. So close to 400 pounds for, for the weight. And this is in kilograms. And the, and the engine power a little bit above 100 horsepowers so we just get the torque here we don't get a horsepower rating so I cannot give you that but this uh, ultraviolet F99 seems to have similar specs 
and you look at uh, the, the, the Ducati, the Panigale, probably the nicest Ducati on the market right now. It's about the same, close to 400 pounds. The, the power is 155. I'm guessing that the ultraviolet might have a little bit less power than that. But the Newton meters, the torque, are probably going to be slightly even better than 100 that you're getting over here. And then, we, I don't know the price of the ultraviolet superbike, but these Italian bikes cost over 20000 So, here it is. So $20,000, the Ducati is a little bit more, it's more like twenty-three. If they could get the price down to a much lower level, and I don't know if they will, so here's the horsepower. It's not that far from the electrics, of I mean from, from the gasoline bikes. Obviously, gasoline bikes typically have a higher top speed, but acceleration that's not quite as good. You look at the top speed here. This is minimum 150 miles per hour, and if you compare that to the Ducati, it's really very similar. Hundred. Oh, that's the horsepower. We, we are not getting a top speed. Hmm. Could the Ducati do 200, uh, 200 uh, miles per hour? It's not impossible that they could do that because gasoline, gasoline bikes typically have a higher speed. So this is kilometer per hour. No, it's just a, uh, it's just a hundred fifty roughly the same 150 miles per hour top speed so depending upon the price if the price is right I would not buy a super bike I think they are highly dangerous but if this is something you're into I think this is going to upset the market this is all I have on the ultraviolet right now and I'm certainly looking forward to what's going to happen in the last quarter of this year because Maybe this is too optimistic, but then at least by next spring, spring of 25, we should have this bike. Wow. I'll be back.